My name is Kate Rowley. I'm a deaf researcher. My co-author is Kiersey Cormier. Kiersey is hearing. We're both interested in how deaf children acquire British Sign Language and in deaf adults as late learners of British Sign Language. Also, how British Sign Language is structured, as well as investigating the British deaf community's attitude to sign language. Language attitudes are really influential around how we both perceive and express language. We often judge people on how they use languages, spoken or signed. Our beliefs relating to language have an influence on our vocabulary choices, whether those are signs or words that we choose to use, or ones that we choose to avoid and find alternatives for. Language attitudes are highly influential on language use itself. There's a large body of work on spoken language attitudes, but much less research on language attitudes in sign languages. Recently, we've seen more attention being paid to language attitudes of sign languages. We know that British Sign Language shows a high degree of regional variation. And there have been plenty of studies to document this, evidencing the high amount of regional variability in BSL. There are lots of different signs used across a range of different concepts, we know that across the regions, there are various numbering systems, for example. We see this type of variation in English as well. If we take the example of a bread roll, in some parts of the country it's called a bap, and in others a balm. That's just one example from spoken English. They're all referring to the same bread roll. So we know that there's a high degree of regional variation for British Sign Language. What we're also interested to know is the deaf community's attitude to this. For example, is the deaf community aware of the high degree of variation across the country? Is this variation valued? And to what extent? Also, when meeting someone from a different region, would you adapt to use the signs that they use from their region, or would you insist on only using your own region's signs? When meeting deaf people from another region, is it still possible to understand the signs they use? And is it still possible to communicate effectively or not? Furthermore, what's the deaf community's feeling around language standardisation? Would the community feel okay about there being less regional variation and a more standardised use of some signs, or is that something they actively don't want? These are the questions that we asked. So, what were the findings of our research? We found that the community were very well aware of regional variation in sign language across the country. They were able to give us examples from other regions of the types of signs that they knew were used. We now have a collection of different examples of signs showing regional variation. Lots of what we were told also relates to previous research on behaviours, for example, around the use of mouthings and fingerspelling and the accommodation that people show when using other signs from other regions. To give an example, people said that for those living in the north, they use less mouthings compared to those living in the south of the country. So this directly links to behaviours. We also found that people believe that regional variation is an equivalent to different accents heard in spoken language. However, they're actually not the same thing. Accents about the pronunciation of a word. Regional variation is more about using a different sign in place of another. Like I said earlier about the bread roll being called a balm or a bap. This shows lexical variation rather than the same signs being produced differently. An important finding is that the deaf community really value regional variation and the need to preserve the signs that are used in different parts of the country. As part of preserving BSL, preserving regional variation is important and gives BSL equal status to English by having such strong patterns of variation.
Previous research has also found that young signers seem to use less regional variation. This applies to colours, countries, also numbers and place names across the UK. So why would there be less use of regional variation in the younger population? This may be accounted for by the changes in education policy. Historically, deaf children used to attend deaf schools, but there's now been a much stronger move towards mainstreaming of deaf pupils. This is a policy decision that's had a significant impact, although it hasn't included consultation and discussion with the community itself. Policy makers and decision makers will often do this without actually talking to the constituent group, in this case, deaf people. So we see these changes impacting language use and the deaf community are not happy with this. Because the change to British Sign Language itself has a consequential effect in reducing the vitality of the language. This research has found that the deaf community very much values regional variation, regional vocabulary, and it values British Sign Language itself. And these values should be recognised by policy makers. The community values the language and its degree of variation, and this should be reflected in policy decisions. It has implications for BSL teaching. For those who teach BSL, they should ensure that they teach signs from across the regions. Also to make sure that wherever a teacher is living, they teach the signs local to them and to their region. By doing this, that will ensure that regional variation is preserved in British Sign Language and is passed on to younger, future generations. <laughs>